Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, and, and uh, thank you for uh, making the time to be here. Uh, my name is Deepak. I'm a software engineering lead at uh, PayPal uh, uh, Big Data and Data Platform Engineering Organization. And uh, I manage a couple of products, Gimel and GDC, which are open source by PayPal. And uh, I also have uh, with me here uh, Arsh Bhimani, who is uh, the uh, uh, senior software engineer. Um, working with me on uh, UDC. Right. Uh, so today we are going to uh, talk about uh, recommendation systems on uh, UDC, uh, how we built it uh, using a um, combination of Neo4j, Spark, and a few other stuff. So uh, quickly, the uh, agenda that uh, we will be going through in the next 30 minutes. We'll uh, have a very quick uh, look at what unified uh, data catalog is. This is just to set the context for us to uh, uh, navigate through the remaining part of the session. And uh, we'll also look at uh, why we built a recommendation system for a data catalog and uh, the overview of the uh, things that we considered for recommendations, followed by the uh, deep dive and architecture, uh, which uh, Harsh will be covering. And, uh, also, we'll talk about uh, how we plan to expand uh, this uh, concept beyond the uh, beyond just being the recommendation system for UDC. And finally, we'll pause for uh, questions. So uh, what is uh, Unified uh, Data Catalog, or UDC? Uh, UDC is basically uh, the enterprise uh, data catalog. Uh, it's a homegrown product in uh, PayPal. We developed it uh, from scratch, and uh, it's you can think of UDC as a Google search, uh, but for uh, the metadata of all the data assets we have in uh, PayPal. Uh, when I say data assets, you can uh, think of uh, various uh, stores such as Hive, Teradata, MySQL, Oracle, cloud stores. Kafka, Elasticsearch, and various other things that an enterprise would have. Uh, so UDC is meant to serve as this uh, search portal where uh, one can uh, come to the uh, portal and then uh, search for some uh, data assets and then uh, self service. So when we say a data set, it's um, it's nothing but uh, a single. Um, object that might reside in some store, like a table in a database, or a topic in a Kafka, or an index, or a document in a document-based database. So we expect, the, or we envision the user to come to UDC and then uh, uh, look for data sets, determine more information like owners, usage, statistics, access controls, and then finally figure out if that is what a user uh, requires to fulfill their uh, job duties. When I say user, it could be different personas. Um, could be data engineer trying to create pipelines, looking for data sets that best fits their need, or an analyst trying to create a report or a dashboard, which might require combining uh, data sets from different stores, uh, looking for information like business metadata and so on. Or even um, an ML engineer who is trying to build and train models, who requires uh, data from different stores. Most of us, uh, uh, here, uh, will, I'm sure we'll acknowledge the fact that building a model these days, uh, the toughest part is sourcing the right data and then uh, um, training the models with the right data sources. Creating the pipelines for those data sources is a big job. Apart from that, we also have other personas of late uh, who are wearing the business side who are trying to fulfill GDPR privacy compliance. So all of these folks have this big problem of uh, finding the right data sets that require uh, uh, to fulfill uh, their job needs. That's what UEC strives to solve. Uh, coming back to a very uh, high level view, like 10,000 foot, uh, UDC is basically uh, nothing but a meta store, which has uh, all these different uh, stores that uh, we scan within PayPal. You can think of the analogy of a Google uh, search. Google scrolling all these different websites and then uh, um, story, uh, indexing them and then there is uh, the notion of page ranking algorithm, which which uh, basically applies and then um, 
when you go to Google and then you search for something, you get the sorted results. Now you can apply the same analogy for the data assets. In an enterprise, we have this notion of discovery services, which goes and crawls all these different uh, stores that we may have in an enterprise. UBC indexes the metadata and then applies sorting, ranking, and all of those algorithms. And then the user comes to the portal and then self-services his or her needs. So uh, why recommendations for a data catalog? If that's a big question. Uh, we need to look, go and look back at the growth story for our data catalog, UDC. Uh, it's been almost 20 months. Um, we uh, started UDC as a side product or a supporting config system back in 2018 for our uh, um, own big data framework, which we call as Gimel, which was open source big data. And uh, we saw the potential for uh, that config system to become the actual data catalog for analytics itself. So we spun it off as a separate product, uh, put the UI on top of it, and then made it the data catalog for analytics. Very quickly, we realized the power of such catalog, which is homegrown, which has access to all our data stores. Then we uh, finally uh, have this as our enterprise data catalog right now. On the other side, we have over 1,000 internal users who are currently using UDC uh, from uh, various locations across the globe and uh, a lot of different delivery organizations who wear the functionalities of uh, risk scientists or uh, financial uh, reporting analysts or uh, data engineers and so on. And uh, it's just the beginning for the data catalog. We have uh, 250 plus uh, data stores. But this is uh, probably 1% to 2% of the entire data asset we have. So within that 250 plus data stores, we have more than 1.7 million data sets. Now you can imagine the scale when we go uh, ramp up and go to 50% or 100% or close to 100%. There's going to be this human, humongous uh, amount of data assets in one catalog. How is the user going to then come and self-service their needs? And uh, if you take this analogy uh, or scale and then apply to a well-known platforms, um, such as Amazon or Netflix, it's no brainer. Um, all of these platforms created this recommendation system uh, to make sure it's uh, the results are targeted to users based on their profile, their activities. And uh, really, the users are able to use uh, those uh, search results to uh, quickly do what they want and move on. So how can recommendation help in UDC? So as I mentioned earlier, we have um, various personas, analysts, scientists, developers, administrators. And more recently, we have uh, a lot of uh, folks from the business group trying to serve uh, or answer questions around GDPR, compliance, security, privacy, which is becoming increasing, increasingly more uh, critical for running the business. And um, to see the other side, the scale, we uh, we uh, encounter this classic, uh, what we call as the long tail effect, where 95% uh, of the data sets that we have or the products that we may have in a catalog may not be as influential as the top 5%, which is really usable, influential, and uh, effective for most of the people who are doing the job. So. How do we make sure the results in UDC um, are very uh, effective for users who come in wearing this different persona? How do we make sure we have those top 5 to 10% of the uh, data assets which are really influential uh, pop up in the top search results? These are the two problems that we are uh, trying to solve by building the recommendation system. So with the user profile and their activities, plus the data set profiles, combining, combining them together will give us uh, this power to create, create and personalize recommendations, which will make the user experience uh, uh, better for uh, the users and also make their uh, uh, serving needs very fast on the UDC portal. So we ended up building the recommendation system. Uh, we'll take you through the journey and the details. But uh, this is what it looks like today. If you follow the arrow marks, on the top right corner, I have uh, 
myself logging into UDC and this is the, like I mentioned, the search. But what we have at the bottom is uh, recommended for you and topics. Um, recommended for you is more personalized based on various uh, signals that we take from uh, different uh, things into consideration. Topics is more like a page rank result, which gives you the top uh, searched L data sets or top view data sets or top access data sets. This is running in the beta mode as, as of today. So um, having started the recommendations and trying to build the recommendation, we stumbled upon this uh, classic challenge, which any other system uh, um, of recommendation comes across which is called as a cold start problem. So when you build a recommendation system, you could take various approaches, uh, like um, collaborative filtering, content-based filtering, which will uh, help you solve the problem of recommending uh, something to users uh, from different perspectives. But the big problem some of the system faces is when the user is new, as in the user lands on the website the first time ever, how do you recommend something to the user? And when you recommend, how do you make sure it's not garbage or it's really usable for the user? These are the two problems which uh, we wanted to solve because as I mentioned before, it's just the beginning of UDC and uh, we expect to have uh, a ramp up on user base and all of them are going to be mostly new users. Not only that, when uh, somebody new to PayPal joins, the company and then uh, they are looking at UDC, how do they make, how do we make sure they get something which is very uh, usable for them? Um, this is where uh, we had to make the choice of how do we uh, do the recommendation. So we ended up uh, uh, concluding uh, that we need to build a graph of things. When I say things, all the connected components in the data eco eco space, uh, which will uh, help us uh, connect users with various other activities and other uh, aspects in the system, thus helping us determine what is the persona of the user and also make sure we are able to come up with a recommendation that is really useful for the user. So we, we came up with this conceptual model of what we wanted to build. If you follow me on the top uh, right uh, of this uh, graph, we have this very high level view of uh, the company, which is nothing but data link. And then we wanted to um, start from there and have a complete uh, depth of graph where we can go and traverse through various adjacencies or what we call as the companies that we acquired in the past, maybe Braintree, Venmo, or Radiant, or HyperWallet, and so on. And if we take PayPal itself has site and PayPal analytics. If I go deeper into analytics, it has various stores. This is just an example uh, for the concept. There is a hive, bunch of hive uh, clusters, a bunch of Kafka clusters, but within a hive cluster, there are so many data sets in the order of thousands or hundreds of thousands. Similarly, there are a few hundred clusters we have in PayPal. Each of them have uh, hundreds of data sets or topics. And uh, if you look at the red dots that we have here, the nodes, these are nothing but the access controls, the roles that somebody needs to access the databases or the system or the tables or the topics. Uh, so this is like a, another subgraph of access controls, while this is the subgraph of the uh, PayPal organization. This is the subgraph of uh, all the data stores. On the left side, you have the uh, subgraph of people. Um, I report to, let's say, Don, and Don has two reportees, and uh, Harsh and uh, Jim report to me, and we belong to the uh, these organizations, uh, which is internal to PayPal, and then uh, we reside in this location. So if you start putting together a graph of all these different things, uh, and then start attaching to this graph by augmenting the data set activities, uh, it's really a gold mine, and you can do a lot of things with it. So this is what we realized uh, will help us not only build a recommendation system, but also expand it to many more things in the future. So with this concept, uh, we explored a lot of uh, options. We explored uh, various graph databases, and then uh, we finally ended up 
choosing Neo4j for uh, persisting and creating the graph and uh, for processing the uh, data from various sources and also to draw recommendations. Even if you want to do it outside of Neo4j, we wanted uh, some good processing engine and uh, operating at scale. So we used, uh, we decided to use Spark and graphics. Uh, we are heavy in Spark in PayPal, so a uh, lot of expertise and a lot of uh, support for Spark uh, within PayPal, so that fits well. And uh, Gimel is something which we open source, which helps us access various stores at scale with ease. It makes the integration easier. While uh, Neo4j really helps us uh, meet all our storage requirements like asset compatibility, good visualization, uh, integration with Spark and various other um, stack, even good support for Python programming languages such as uh, Java and so on. And uh, especially the epochs, which are uh, very useful for us to draw some uh, algorithms within the database without having to import all the data or export all the data out of the database. So with that being said, uh, we ended up building uh, uh, the graph uh, as a POC or as the initial concept. So what we have here is a recorded demo of what we have built. You can see all of these uh, different subgraphs of organizations which are basically disconnected, as in the orgs are silo, the, you can connect the organization. But once you uh, start clicking into one organization and then expanding uh, that, you will see more connections between the organizations in terms of uh, the location or in terms of uh, the assets the organization own or in terms of people. Um, two different personalities from uh, two different people wearing the same persona from different organizations have the same access controls or own the same kind of data sets. So a lot of connections uh, can be drawn, uh, which is usually not very easy to perceive when you uh, look at all of these from different aspects. As in, if you look at the org aspect, or if you look at the data asset aspect, or if you look at the access control aspect, or even something else like building a use case and creating pipelines, there is some commonality or touch point, which is what we uh, ended up building by putting together all of these uh, different connections and building the big graph of connected components. So uh, with that introduction, I would like to hand it over to Harsh, who is going to uh, walk us through the uh, um, internal architecture and the implementation of the graph. On to you, Harsh. Yeah. So can I share the screen? Yeah. Okay. You can, uh... All right. Uh, so thanks, Deepak, for giving an introduction of UDC and also uh, explaining the need of uh, having a recommendation system uh, for UDC. So uh, now, since now that we know that uh, why we need a recommendation system and why we went ahead with a Neo4j, uh, let's do a deep dive into the uh, actual architecture of what we achieved. So uh, when we talk about recommendations uh, in the architecture, basically there are there are two components. One is building the graph of the connected components, as Deepak showed, and second is actually getting the recommendations out of it. That is mining the recommendations out of it and then uh, viewing it back on the on the screen on on the UDC UI. So for building the graph, uh, say for example, there was a, there, there's a user that comes to UDC. We capture a couple of uh, we capture some information for that user. So first we capture the UDC uh, uh, the logs for that user. That is all the previous data sets that the user the, that the user has viewed in UDC so far. Uh, we, we we capture all those logs into Elasticsearch. So we get all those logs. We load it into uh, Neo4j. Uh, we also have another uh, PayPal Analytics product called PayPal Notebooks which is just an internal version of uh, Jupyter Notebooks uh, that is heavily used by analysts and data scientists within PayPal to query these data sets and then also uh, basically mingle with the data. So, and also those logs are captured in Elasticsearch. So both these logs are, cap are, are uh, extracted from Elasticsearch and uh, loaded into Neo4j. Then we also get the user manager relationship. So as Deepak mentioned, uh, we can connect all these multiple nodes by some common aspect. So for example, there are multiple users that report into a common manager. And similarly, there are 
many people who, who actually report into a common organization. So for that, we are capturing this user-manager relationship uh, that comes from one of the internal PayPal products. And also, the uh, we capture uh, information like which location does the user uh, work at, and then also which organization does the user belong to. And then we'll, we take all this information, and then we clean it, of course, and then we load it into a graph. Now, this is a chaotic graph. It's a, it's a big one. It's a graph of all the entire connected components. And what we have to do is we have to mine recommendations out of it. So the next step, uh, uh, and yeah, we load this in Neo4j. So the next step begins with using Spark and graphics libraries. And we use these libraries and Spark to generate recommendations out of this graph. So when I talk about recommendations, uh, as uh, Deepak had showed on the UI, we have two different types of recommendations. One is uh, recommendations for that user specifically. And one and some, there is something called as topics, which is the globally most popular data set uh, within PayPal. So these two categories are, are mainly generated using the graphics libraries and, the, and Spark on Neo4j. Uh, in the first one, that is recommendation uh, for the user specifically, we captured uh, basically two signals. One is uh, the, the, the data sets that were viewed by the user most number of times, that is user views, the top views by that user, and also something called as group affinity. So group affinity is, uh, uh, group affinity is something where we use a user's uh, relation, like where uh, who the user reports to or what organization he belongs to, to uh, recommend some data sets to him. This essentially solves our uh, cold start problem. So as you can see here, we use Air, Apache Airflow for all the scheduling of uh, this uh, uh, recommendation engine. And we come up with three different types of recommendations where we capture three signals initially. So we have topics. Uh, that is all the topics uh, that topics is basically the globally popular data sets within PayPal. They are there which are viewed by uh, most number of the people because as we can see the scale at which UDC is operating we have uh, 100 plus delivery teams and 30 plus locations that are accessing UDC uh, day in and day out. So we need to capture the most popular data sets and show it to the user. That is like the most basic recommendation that you can show. Uh, we also show user reviews, which is again a uh, total calculation of uh, total uh, summation of all the total number of views for the data set for that user, and also the group affinity. Uh, we load we load all this data into UDC Metastore, which is MySQL, and the UDC UI makes a call to the UDC Metastore to view it on the uh, on, on the UDC UI. And so this is how basically, if I just you know in a nutshell, this is how the architecture looks like. We have a chaotic graph of connected components on the left. And then we have an abstraction layer. Oh, sorry, just a second. Yeah, sorry. So uh, we have a, a full graph of connected components on the left. We have an abstraction layer. And then uh, when these recommendations are surfaced into UDC, this is how they look like. And as I said, we have two different categories recommended for you, which captures two signals the, the top user views and the group affinity. And we have topics, which are the globally most popular data sets. Uh, moving on. So now let's dig deep into this three different types of uh, data source. So one is the group affinity. Uh, in group affinity, basically, we what we do is we get the users. If there is a user who comes to UDC, we get his manager. We get all the users within that manager. And then we uh, get all the users below, uh, who report into that manager and get their views and recommend it to the user. So as you can see here, we have the query here, and then we run it. So on the left, if you follow my cursor, uh, this is the user Harsh who is coming to UDC. We first get the manager because now we have a connected graph of everything in Neo4j. We get Deepak, who is Harsh's manager, who is, which is this node, and then we get two other users who report into Deepak, uh, and we get all the uh, views of those users in UDC. Like we get all, all the datasets that they're accessing in UDC. And from there, we make a common list of data sets. And then we sum up the total number of views for those data sets. And whichever has the highest view is recommended to, uh, to this user. So this basically solves the cold start problem for us. Because if the user Harsh is coming to UDC for the first time, we are banking on the fact that some members, of, uh, some members uh, under the same manager must have used UDC. Uh, and must have used UDC in, in the past. And they have viewed some data sets. So we bank on that fact, and we recommend those data sets. Of course, this is just an idea, and the the whole the I mean, we can even extend this concept to uh, to the user organization level, where we recommend data sets at the entire organization level to one particular uh, user. So this is how uh, the group affinity works.
And then again, when we surface uh, this results back to UDC, we have something like this. For any user hush, we have the dataset IDs and the total number of views. So this is how we recommend the, the group affinity results. Uh, the next one is the user views, which is a pretty simple uh, recommendation where we just get all the views for a particular, uh, all the data set views for a particular user that comes to UDC. And then we just get the maximum, we just add the total number of views repeated for that user and we show it to the uh, to that user as a, as a recommendation and which falls under the user views uh, category. So this is uh, that and moving on, we have the global topics, uh, which is again, uh, this is this is where we get the most popular data sets within PayPal. So uh, of course, everything that we do, we do it in PayPal notebooks as of now. So uh, here we are loading the graphics libraries. Uh, we are getting the relationship. We are loading this particular relationship of username, view data set, and the data set into uh, Neo4j. We are applying a page rank algorithm uh, directly. And this becomes easy uh, using Neo4j because we can just implement the entire page rank algorithm on, on, on all the uh, uh, vertices of this particular relation uh, that we have loaded in Neo4j. And which generates something like this, which says which is the most popular data set today that has been accessed in, in, in UDC. And we just, again, we just translate this back into UDC and show it on the on the UI. So these are essentially the three uh, different types of uh, recommendations that we capture using Neo4j and Spark and graphics libraries. And uh, going back and giving a recap on how we show it in the UI, as you can see, there is uh, this recommended for you. And then there is this top picks. So top picks is again the globally most popular ones, and the recommended for you captures two signals, uh, which is the top user views and the group affinity. Uh, so this is essentially the whole recommendations architecture that we have. Uh, we definitely have a future plan uh, for these recommendations, which uh, I would like deeper to uh, expand on. Uh, thank you, Harsh. Uh, just to um, reiterate on what Harsh uh, mentioned about. Uh, the uh, personalization. Although the uh, demo or uh, the recorded demo that we have is only at the organization level um, for uh, getting the connected components at group affinity, we uh, actually expanded that to uh, various other things like the user activities or uh, user profile based on the roles that they have and so on, which is uh, a little bit overwhelming to showcase in the demo. So. The group affinity is a combination of various aspects, and uh, giving the org uh, is what we felt is something which is simplistic to uh, show and uh, explain. So, um, the um, as a net result of what we ended up doing, we basically built a graph of all the connected components which uh, belong to the data ecosystem. So, when you now look at it. Uh, from outside the box of uh, UDC, the it's like a gold mine, as I said, because we have all these different uh, views which was not there before. So uh, we uh, feel the uh, power of this uh, graph can be extended beyond UDC, where UDC can just be a subset of the various use cases that we will really try to solve. So now we are trying to augment this graph by bringing in various other signals like bringing the entire workday org structure or uh, the complete identity controls and the links to the databases and uh, the owners, the queries, the users of databases, the lineage of how people query the data and uh, what sources are used. And then the documents, uh, as in we might be using Jira for issues, mentions, wiki for documents, documentation design or any other form of uh, uh, architecture. Then uh, we talk about data sets in various Slack channels where, where we uh, socialize about data and uh, analytics. By tapping into all of these different places, we can actually make it much more powerful and usable for uh, not just recommendations for UDC beyond that. So we, we can definitely uh, see the power of this for uh, solving GDPR or compliance or privacy needs where we can figure out what are overutilized rules, underutilized rules, for example, rationalize the access controls, make sure uh, there is no hotspots or highly influential nodes, which uh, may or may not be legitimate based on the security needs of the company. So that is the plan uh, going forward. Um, 
make this uh, graph robust, uh, production grade, and then uh, expand it to various other use cases. Uh, that summarizes the uh, whole session. Uh, again, thank you for uh, listening to us uh, with all the patience. Uh, I will open it up for uh, questions.